Solix assembly video. Please ensure that you have all the parts on the component list before beginning. To efficiently assemble Solix, it should be done in the order as listed. Take the table off of the skid and set it upright. Place the joystick assembly onto the rails and attach the covers. Lock the joystick down, then place the scanner head on top of the joystick and hang the control box. Assemble the monitor arm and attach to the table, then hang the computer, then hang the monitor, assemble the chin rest, place the keyboard and mouse, including the dongle for the mouse, then cable the controller and computer, attach the plastic cover over the joystick assembly, and apply the back cover. To get the table out of the skid, Lift the wheeled portion over the lip of the box, pulling it towards you. Place the wheels on the ground and then tip the table upright. The table has four locking wheels. Below are the hanging hooks for the controller and the computer. Computer to the right, controller to the inside. Receptacles for the plugs, the up and down switch the plug for the wall, and the master power switch. Joystick assembly with rail covers. Place the joystick assembly on the tracks, then add the two covers. There are two small screws attaching each cover. Make sure the wheels align by rolling it forward so that both wheels touch the front cover at the same time. Once the covers are on, Lock the assembly down using the silver knob on the right hand side. Take care when lifting the scanner head and control box from the packaging. Make sure that the control box is scanner are close enough to the table so that when you lift the scanner head up to place it onto the joystick assembly, you do not put unnecessary tension on the cable. You may have to adjust the table height uh, and the location of the control box. Make sure that the head is all the way down to the joystick assembly. And then take the control box, be careful because it's heavy, Position it under the table, lift it up, and slide it onto the hooks. Attach the jack connector to the side of the unit. There are also two screws which lock the head to the joystick assembly. Assemble the monitor arm parts. They snap together and have locking set screws. The rationale for doing the assembly now is it's easier to put it onto the table before the computer is attached. When tightening the bolt, make sure that the metal plate and that the monitor arm base do not block the cable hole. You can now mount the monitor or wait until after the computer is hung. There's a small lock that allows the monitor to snap in to the monitor arm. The plate should be attached to the back of the monitor using the four screws. Next, we want to remove the cable cover and attach the cables.
There's a power cable and HDMI. Snap the cable into the upper groove, making sure that there's sufficient cable to allow the monitor screen to flex and turn. The power cable needs to be fed from below the table. And again, snapped into the upper guide, leaving room for the monitor to pivot and turn. Then place both cables together and secure them using the lower cable guard. Next, we want to hang the computer on the hooks down below and add the locking bracket. Lift carefully, the computer is heavy. Make sure the table is at a good working height. Lift it up evenly and slide it onto the hooks. Lock the computer and control box from sliding off the hooks by adding the angle bracket. It is preferable to do this before cabling so that you can push the cables into both the control box and computer. Unbox the chin rest. There should be four bolts to attach to the table and there should also be the cam module. Make sure that the cable from the scanner head is under the chin rest bracket. And remember to connect and tape down the power connection for the external fixation. There are holes in the casing so that your Allen key can go through to tighten the bolts for the chin rest. Make sure to tighten all four bolts securely. Next, add the mouse and keyboard. The keyboard tray swings out from underneath the table. There's an on off switch on both the mouse and the keyboard. There will be two charging cables. And there is an on off switch on the keyboard. And the charging plug is on the end. The mouse and keyboard can both be used when plugged into the USB. Remember, put the mouse keyboard dongle in the back, in the computer, in the bottom left USB slot. Next is cabling. All the cables have colored tape around the end, and there's a matching uh, piece of colored tape on the back of the computer or control box. When you're assembling the cables, try not to crisscross them too much and so that you'll have an easier time bundling them. Check the install manual for a detailed diagram of cables. There are two power cables. They plug into the column to the hole in the control box chassis. One goes to the computer and the other goes to the control box.
make sure they're plugged in firmly so that there is a good connection. The monitor power box sits on the shelf of the control box after you've plugged in the power cables and then plugs into the receptacle on the control box. The HDMI plugs into the back of the computer. And the blue cable connects the control box to the computer. From the chin rest, ensure that you connect the power for the external fixation if not done earlier, and then run the scanner cable and base cable through the guide. It's easier to have the guide attached and loose, and then just place the cables in it. Then tighten the cable guide down. Prior to bundling the cables, ensure that the joystick moves freely all the way back to the left and to the right and all the way forward making sure that the cable runs freely, then lock it all the way back and proceed with your cable bundling. After connecting all the cables and making sure the joystick moves freely, neatly bundle the cables ensuring there is no strain on the connections and that the cable bundles do not pull on any of the computer cards, which might cause a disconnection. Having removed any protective film covering, Apply the joystick cover. Take care around the adjustment knob. Slide it into the groove, then push forward. Wiggle it a little and allow it to snap into place. Do not apply a lot of pressure to force it. There are four screws located under the table to lock it down. To finish the chin wrist assembly, snap on the front face plate covering and place the space filler in the back by the adjustment knob. There is a cam box with two lenses. The silver is the full range lens and the black is the normal cornea pachymetry and line scan lens. The storage location is just above the control box. The last step is to apply the back cover. Make sure all your cabling is neat. The cover has a keyhole slot on the left and after the bend. And then there is a V cut where the middle screw sits and a single hole on the right hand side. Lift the cover and locate the screw on the left hand side and insert it into the keyhole slot then push forward so that the keyhole slot locks the v goes around the middle screw and then you can add the final thumb screw to lock it in place This is what the final assembled unit should look like.